Welcome to part three of making this needle felted Jack Russell Terrier. In this portion, we're gonna be building up the rest of the definition in the body using the colored wool. So before I start adding the colored wool, I'm just gonna add a little bit more definition between the eyes so that there's a a more clear separation between the forehead and the muzzle. I'm attaching some white roving um, to the forehead and to the muzzle area and I'm just going to wrap it around and start getting this area covered in white because this portion of my dog will be white. Here I'm going to press in a little bit with my left thumb. I'm pressing in as I felt around this forehead area so that I can get a more dramatic bend on the forehead and the muzzle. And one of the things that I am trying to really focus on is making sure that the eyes are at the correct angle, that they're both facing forward and that they're at the same angle. I'm still building up the shape of the face and in the areas that the dog does not have white markings, I'm still just using the regular core wool. So I'm building up the shape around the eyes. Now I'm going to just test out a few different modifications to the pose. So I'm turning its head a little bit to the right, seeing how I like that, turning it a little bit more to the left.
Here I'm continuing to shape the face and it's important to really have a good reference picture, especially from multiple angles if possible, so that you can get the details right around the eyes and the cheeks and the muzzle. And a lot of this, it just takes a lot of time and it really helps to take pictures of the sculpture that you're working on from multiple angles and look at the pictures rather than look at your actual sculpture. This dog that I'm working on is a tricolor, so I'm going to be using a brown wool and a black wool in addition to the white wool that'll cover most of its body. And you could use whatever color wools that you want for whatever dog you're making. I'll put a link in the description to examples of wools that would work for this particular dog. One thing to keep in mind is you don't want your finished dog to look like its eyeballs are sticking on the outside. You want them to seem like they're set inside its skull. And to do that, you just are gonna take the wool in whatever color it is that your dog is and you're gonna build it up around the eye. So that'll be above the eye where the brow of the dog is and also even below it so that the eye seems set inside the skull. I'm continuing to sculpt the neck and make it thicker and more proportional. As I add pieces to give it bulk, I'm also at this point going to be adding thin pieces to sort of cover and smooth so that it doesn't look like there's chunks of wool, that it all looks continuous. But there's still some sculpting that I'm going to keep working on uh, along its body just to give it the bulk that it needs to have. But at this point also just focus on not leaving any sort of lumpy areas, at least in the parts where it's supposed to be smooth on the dog's body. Here I decided that its elbow that's lifted is not quite the right shape, so I'm adding a little bit more wool to the elbow portion to give it um, just a more complete look. It was really too short, that distance of the foreleg right there. So I'm adding this little nub just to 
give it the correct proportions. Now I'm going to go ahead and take out these placeholder eyes and put in its painted eyes. I'm just going to put a drop of tacky glue on the stem portion of the acrylic eyes and press it in place. Taking a piece of black wool and I'm going to start blocking out the shape of the nose. And again, it's better to start out a little bit on the smaller side and then build the nose larger as it needs to be so that you don't have to try to take away wool. I apologize that some of this footage is cut off so that it's not in view. It's just difficult for me to see what's what the camera's catching and what it's not and then I get caught up in just trying to make the sculpture and forget to keep checking to see that it's in view, but hopefully it's still something that you're able to follow along with. I'm taking a piece of darker brown wool and I'm just going to use this wool to create the shape of the eye. Obviously dogs' eyes don't look like a perfectly round little ball stuck on their face. There's shaping, so I'm going to take this dark brown and kind of create the corners of the eye. And you can really poke it in um, around the plastic eye so that it can be very thin where you want it thin and it just creates almost like a little, like an outline where their eyelid is.
the inner corner of the eye and even a little bit on the outer corner will probably be the thickest part of the, the dark wool. And then along the underneath of the eye and on the top of the eye, it'll probably be a little bit thinner. Just going to continue building up the dog's brow. So I'm using the, the coat color that the dog has to just build up the thickness of the wool above the eye so that it'll have those expressive little eyebrows. I do like to use the needle to sort of tug against the wool sometimes and then push it in place. So some of the shaping that I do, if you look at this needle, it'll sometimes be bowing a little bit because I'm pressing and then felting and pressing and then felting and this can happen. This was a, um, a 40T needle so it is a little bit more fragile <laughs> so I did break the needle here. To avoid that it is probably better not to apply any sort of strain to the needle at an angle. You know, just poke it straight in and pull it straight out rather than press at an angle against the wool. You'll notice as I'm working on the brow that I sometimes am taking little bits of the wool and sort of rolling it in my fingertips. That's just to get it started felting so that it already starts to kind of have more of a a ball shape rather than just soft fluffy wool. It makes it faster to start getting the shape that I want on the brow. I'm taking a piece of black wool and kind of twirling it in my fingers so that it becomes 
almost like a little tiny piece of yarn. And I'm gonna use this to start outlining the mouth. I'm just building up a little bit more depth to the nose so that it's not like just a flat little black spot on its face, that it actually has a shape.
The spot right beneath the dog's eye should be a little bit thicker in basically just like, it's like the tissue that supports the eyeball. So I'm just, I built that up a little bit more and now I'm adding back a little bit more of the outline of the eyelid with the dark brown wool, just since a little bit of it got lost as I was building up the, the actual muscle underneath the eye. Muzzle shape varies a lot between different breeds of dogs, but for this dog, what I'm trying to do, and it is common, I think, for a lot of dogs, is keep the top part of the muzzle narrow so that it's about the width between the eyes is about the width of the top of the muzzle all the way down to the nose. And then on the underneath of the muzzle it should be wider, probably about halfway, extending about halfway to the middle like maybe of the eyes or sometimes closer to the outer edge of the eyes. So it's a bit like a smooshed triangle, I guess. It's kind of, or a squished little ball. It's narrower on the top than on the bottom. I'm just continuing to add the appropriate color for this exact dog that I'm making. And again, since it's a tricolor, it has some black. And here I break needle number two. <laughs> and that one was actually my thicker needle, which was a 36T, but I hit the armature. Now this little dog that I'm making is mostly white, so I am gonna have to cover its entire body pretty much in the white wool.
Now I'm gonna create the dog's tail. If you had a dog that just had a little nub tail, then you'd barely, you probably wouldn't even need the chenille stem. But this dog that I'm making has a slightly longer tail, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap some of the white wool around a chenille stem, and then just start getting it felted in place.
I'm taking some of the white wool and I'm just thickening the area where the paws are going to be so that I have something to start working with. Now I'm going to add a little more definition to the neck. There's a muscle that goes from behind the ear toward the front along the collarbone. It's been a while since I took zoology, but I think it's sternocleidomastoid muscle, something like that anyway. It's a long name, but you can see it, especially on athletic dogs. And a lot of this, I'm just going to keep adding more muscle definition and, and giving the dog more of a realistic appearance. may seem like I'm kind of just going all over the place, but I just keep looking at the dog and looking at each part of it and seeing what needs to be adjusted and where it needs a little more wool or where it needs to be tightened up more. Here what I did was took a marker and I just outlined the color patches where I need to add them on this exact dog that I'm making. So you can do that for whatever pattern your dog has. You can just lightly trace it out with a, a marker, a felt tip marker, and then you'll know where you need to be adding your patches of color. <laughs> 